Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. All right, 25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. I don't know how long ago we first started talking about the open enrollment period for Medicare, but it feels like when we started doing this, I, I wasn't even thinking that it applied to me. <laughs> now, I think I'm, what, four or five years away from this actually applying to me, so we have to be 65, right, for this whole yes. thing, right? Uh, so I, now I better start paying attention. I've, I've tried to pay attention all this time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Tyler Jung is on the phone. He's the chief medical officer for Healthcare Partners. He's talking about the importance of Medicare open enrollment and the changes and reforms to Medicare coverage. That's fine. And I think it started yesterday, if I understood my notes right. Good morning, Dr. Jung. How you doing? Good morning, Larry and Robin. Yeah, we're getting close to that age. We're, we're both 61, so... Well, I'm almost there. Yeah. <laughs> She's 61. So we, 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 how we, we have four years to go, right? That, that's right. Generally, it's at, at age 65 that you qualify for Medicare. It, it'll still be around by the time we get there, right? <laughs> <laughs> we all hope so. Uh, what, what is the, uh, uh, this is probably just a, a, a maybe a generic question, but what is the reason that open enrollment is only limited to a certain amount of weeks? Well, it is an important window of time. It's from October 15th to December 7th, where Medicare beneficiaries have a chance to choose the kind of health care coverage, including prescription drug benefits, for 2016. And how do they know which one is best for them? Yeah, that's a great question. It all comes down to research and looking carefully at options. Everyone's different, uh, but looking at options such as costs, uh, benefits, uh, what doctors belong to certain uh, plans, uh, these are key areas that should be looked at uh, going into 2016. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, people are told to uh, stay away from uh, Medicare from uh, a a few different avenues because they are not to be trusted. How do they know they're applying for the right venues? Uh, Good question, Robin. Again, it comes down to looking at individual cases and individual circumstance. Um, All Uh, Medicare beneficiaries will be enrolled in traditional Medicare. Uh, It's from there that they can have choices to stay within traditional Medicare or to choose uh, other supplement plans or, in fact, there are uh, health plans that are involved that offer Medicare Advantage uh, for patients uh, of that age. So who, who's the best person to ask questions from? Is it your doctor? Is that the best person to get advice regarding which uh, plan to sign up for? No, that, 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 that certainly is an option. Uh, we recommend going to Medicare.gov to get uh, a really unbiased view of uh, the choices that you might have. Uh, uh, but certainly talking with your doctor and, in fact, your family uh, and uh, is a great way to start. Do you have to have uh, proof of your age? Do you have to submit a birth certificate? Um, my understanding is that that would be taken care of prior to uh, you uh, having uh, access to Medicare. Uh, so th- this would be something that would be fairly automatic once you turn 65. Oh. Now, most most of the times your, your Medicare... Uh, choices will happen at your birth date at the age of 65. This period of open enrollment uh, the next couple months or so is specifically the time when you can change uh, or alter your coverage uh, and it happens every year. That's why this is such an important time of year. Yeah, and that's why some of these questions, the important, uh, some of the angle of these questions should be from the perspective of the person who's already been signed up, somebody who's maybe 70 or, or at least over 65 or 66. So what kind of things, were the, is there something different this year that they need to be aware of that they might have not had before? Yeah, every year it could be different, Larry. So uh, there are uh, things uh, and plans uh, every year change. So it's a great uh, time to look at the, the benefits that are offered. Um, it's a great chance to ensure that the doctor or doctors that you work with um, are part of the coverage. 
Uh, prescription drug benefits are very important to our seniors, so it's a great time for them to make sure that the medications that they are taking are covered. And then finally, costs. Costs can vary from 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 year to year. You're looking at co-pays or co-insurance. Uh, so these are the the areas that I would recommend looking at um, as seniors make their choices for for next year. And then, do some seniors stay with what they have and don't make any change at all? Uh, that, yeah, that does happen. Uh, but again, if uh, uh, my recommendation is for this next couple weeks or a couple months to really look at those benefits, make sure they ha they haven't changed for the individual. Uh, because if they have changed, then it's a good time to kind of look around and see other options. And what if they've changed? So let's say uh, um, let's say I'm, I'm 60, say 67, 68. I've had uh, I've had this for a couple of years now. And I, and I signed up for the same thing because I was fine. And then two months from now, I have some kind of a, a change in my health. Does, am, I, am I not covered for that new condition that I have? Yeah, generally speaking, you are covered. Uh, uh, most of the, uh, tr uh, for traditional Medicare and uh, for virtually all uh, health plans, uh, there is coverage for conditions. Uh, it's a matter of making sure that your doctors are part of the network of uh, the, uh, the medications that you need. Um, they are accessible uh, from a cost standpoint. Uh, Copays are reasonable. So these are sort of the things that are on the fringe that you might want to think about as, um, as the years progress for you. So the questions that they would be asking are mostly money-related, sounds like. Well, uh, Every case is different. Every individual is different. Uh, when you're thinking about uh, out-of-pocket costs um, for seniors, they should be thinking about, number one, the premiums, but number two, co-pays or co-insurance or deductibles that may be embedded within the coverage that they have. And if a, if a person that is on Medicare now and they also have an insurance plan when they retired from their place of business, uh, who is the primary uh, primary on that? It's usually traditional Medicare, um, but their uh, insurance may cover, for instance, their prescription drug benefits. Each kind of uh, scenario that is presented is a little different. Um, but again, that's a that's also a great question during this time to get with some experts or go to the website to figure out what is covered and make sure that everything that uh, is important for that individual um, has some sort of coverage. Is, is there, is, are there differences in the states? Like if, if you're getting advice from, let's say your friend in New York is, is signed up, can you use his advice if he understands it or is Florida going to be different than New York, for example? I think overall um, the, the general concepts are the same. What varies from uh, market to market and state by state are the uh, uh, the plans that are available, and then the, the medical groups that service those plans. Oh, okay, so you need to be aware of that part. It's a medical mm -hmm. group. If you so, so, you want a plan that, that your doctor is in, obviously. That's right. That's oh. Exactly right. Yeah, that would make sense to me. Okay, um, gosh, I'm sure that our listeners have questions that we didn't think of. I, hopefully we've covered some of the topics that our listeners might want to know about. But uh, with the interest of time at hand here, let's give them some information so they can get information. I'm guessing a website is, is a good way to start? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So for general questions about o open enrollment, I would recommend Medicare.gov. Uh, um, for, for the Orlando area, we have uh, uh, within our organization, our medical group, gsaopenenrollment.com uh, is a place where folks can look at and uh, learn more about this important time. Okay. And what does GSA stand for? It's our medical group in Florida. Uh, it's, uh, the, the initials were from our founder, um, uh, uh, back in the 1980s, oh, okay. uh, but JSA is part of the Vita Healthcare Partners, 
um, and has been in the Tampa and Orlando area for many years. Okay, excellent. Well, Doctor, thank you for taking time out of your morning to uh, talk to our listeners about this. It's important to them. We will make sure that this recording we just made will be online so they can listen to it and share it again. Dr. Jung, thank you so much. Thanks, Larry and Robin. You're welcome. We'll be right back. WC.com. Safe boating is no accident. It is going to be a nice day today. A mixture of sun and clouds. The high 82 to 86. Partly cloudy tonight, a low 58 to 70. And tomorrow.